So, uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome. Uh, I'm uh, pleased, uh, pleased to see you here uh, in spite of our uh, unusually uh, nice uh, summer. Probably we're always obsessed with the weather. Uh, probably we're always obsessed with weather here, and in this case, uh, you've arrived to find us uh, going through, for us, an unusual heat wave by our standards. It's my great pleasure today to be, introduced, to be able to introduce uh, Pavlo Klimkin. He is the uh, Foreign Minister of uh, Ukraine, nominated to that position in June of 2014 by President Poroshenko uh, after the Revolution of Dignity at Maidan uh, that uh, we all followed so closely and which has been the subject of uh, more than one event uh, here, Minister, uh, over uh, the years. Uh, Pavlo was... Uh, born in Kursk in Russia. He was educated at a prestigious uh, institute in uh, Moscow, is a graduate in physics and mathematics, is a citizen of Ukraine, has a long work experience as a diplomat, served as a junior diplomat uh, at one stage uh, in Germany. He worked uh, uh, very much on the association agreement between Ukraine and uh, European Union as deputy foreign minister. Uh, he was head of staff in the foreign ministry he returned to Germany as full ambassador in 2012 and then was appointed in June 2014 to the position of minister, which he uh, still holds. Um, he is going to talk to us today about uh, the uh, situation in Ukraine, of course, uh, Crimea and Donbass, and the workload that that imposes also in terms of foreign policy, uh, about the Euro-Atlantic aspirations uh, of uh, Ukraine, uh, there's, there's much to get through. I do not intend to give an extended introduction because I would like you to hear our guest and we will have an opportunity to pose questions uh, afterwards. Uh, so, Minister, uh, you have uh, just, I think, fairly recently had your Normandy format meeting with foreign ministers. The Normandy format, uh, which uh, really coincided with an event hosted by President Hollande in Normandy to recall the, the, the uh, D-Day events at which uh, Germany, France, uh, Russia and Ukraine were present at the level of their presidents. They had a meeting there which I guess was informal but it became somewhat formalised into the Normandy process from which those states, Ukraine, Germany, France and Russia continue dialogue. So to hear about what's going on at foreign ministers level I think will be very interesting to understand the current situation in Donbass, which unhappily, although there is a mince process and a peace process, remains a killing field. I get daily reports uh, from the EU mission in uh, Kiev for the past several years, and hardly a day goes by without reports of uh, deaths and serious injuries uh, to uh, military uh, personnel, but also to civilians. Uh, we have... Um, the aspirations to do with uh, NATO that I mentioned, which uh, have a growing uh, public support in Ukraine, and there is a membership action plan, uh, which I'm sure the minister will speak to. And then we had the question, what might happen when there was a change of administration in the United States? And while it's always sometimes uh, a bit difficult to try to read exactly the dynamics of contemporary politics in the United States, the system itself, as such, has shown a deep engagement with Ukraine, uh, the appointment of a special uh, envoy in the person of Kurt Volker, uh, the provision of uh, some weaponry that had been denied in the past uh, for defensive purposes, uh, and the agreement to the membership action plan in NATO are all elements that show that <coughs> on the uh, US side uh, there has been uh, strong support. Of course, on the EU side, the engagement is uh, a very uh, deep and growing one. Uh, there has been huge reform in, in Ukraine in the uh, recent past, more than in the past 20 years, perhaps done in the past three or four years, uh, and still much to do. So, Minister, we look forward to uh, hearing what you have to say and then to your response to questions. Thank you for joining us. Um, dear colleagues, dear friends, it's a pleasure being there, actually second time, because I, uh, I remember quite well my first time when I was, uh, I was chatting uh, here about the registration agreement. 
it was completely different reality. <laughs> It, uh, it, uh, it seemed to be a virtual reality because I was chief negotiator for a EU-Ukraine association agreement. We've just started uh, talking about visa, visa free for Ukraine. And at the same time, it, it was completely different uh, political reality in Ukraine. It was about Yanukovych, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, total split of, uh, total split of mind. I, uh, I hope I, I successfully concluded our negotiations and uh, have been sent uh, as ambassador to Germany. I did not mind this time because I, uh, I, I could not see myself as someone uh, driving politics uh, in Kyiv. And the previous reality, and Pat, you remember, it's exactly when we, when we met first in a good conversation because uh, you were trying to, uh, to help us. It was not easy. It was not easy to help uh, uh, Ukraine when it's uh, steered by people like, uh, like Yanukovych. But here, here is my point, and... Uh, of course, uh, there, there could be a lot of formal things, actually commended people like, uh, like Pat. What, what is amazing for me, and I mean amazing, uh, you, uh, you never given up on Ukraine. Also under very difficult times. Also when uh, we needed uh, friendly, uh, friendly touch and friendly push uh, in 2014, uh, going on uh, with uh, comprehensive reforms in our parliament, basically changing the way how our politics uh, operates. And we are not there. Let me, let, let me say it quite clearly. We, we are not there in the sense of uh, transforming our country and our society. From the post-Soviet reality we had uh, for many, many years under independence to uh, democratic and uh, European country and society. And uh, just keep saying that it's our goal to become real Europeans to become democratic country uh, attached to rule of law. It's, uh, it could sound uh, like a platitude, but, uh, but it's not. It's not in the case of, uh, it's not in the case of Ukraine. Uh, many people, uh, started uh, identifying Ukraine on the screens uh, with the Maidan. Before that, what was uh, a sort of uh, key wall uh, about Ukraine? It was about Klitschko's, yeah, of course, something which is important, kind of identification, Timoshenko, you know, sitting in jail, yeah, definitely. Fundamentally, Chernobyl and uh, Maybe, maybe football and Dynamo Kiev, but uh, beyond that, it was just Ukraine, um, a country dragging, uh, dragging along uh, with, uh, with the system which uh, did not have a chance uh, to progress. And it's exactly why, uh, why people basically came up with, uh, not, not with slogans, not with requirements, but with, uh, with, their, with their emotions, very sincere emotions, uh, going from, uh, from their hearts. Now, if you, uh, if you listen to the Russians, uh, you've mentioned uh, Normandy Ministerial or whatever meeting. The narrative uh, which is uh, reproduced here, but also by Lavrov, Okay, in 2014, uh, you had uh, a, a state coup in Ukraine. It was a nationalistic coup, 
So now it's about sort of junta driving Ukraine. You know, I participated, uh, uh, still being uh, ambassador in Germany uh, in, in all that. You know, my Russian is okay. Actually, without accent, my mother is Russian. I studied in Moscow. I'm a physicist by education. Uh, and thousands of uh, Ukrainians uh, around, uh, around Maidan in, uh, in different places in Ukraine felt the same way. So the question is why? And why uh, us Ukrainians uh, are different from the Russian society? Uh, and uh, let, let, me, uh, let me check it uh, really clear. It's not about uh, myself uh, blaming, uh, blaming just uh, the, Russian, uh, the Russian narrative. And uh, there, were, there were different times in our history. But uh, we came forward to fight for our Ukraine, how we understand it. And we understand it uh, as, uh, as freedom, as, uh, as democracy, as our European mentality and history, and it's more than a uh, thousand years. It's about our way, how, uh, how we feel uh, Ukraine uh, either can go forward or, you know, uh, should fall backwards to Russia. And it's not about, you know, uh, just uh, putting forward uh, anti-Russian sentiment. It's about uh, the regime in Russia now having decided to take part of our territory, having decided that they could create a sort of a sphere of influence around Russia, and basically taking decisions about Ukraine and about us, uh, us Ukrainians instead of uh, ourselves. So uh, our, our idea from the very beginning was uh, not to fight Russia. It's not about Ukrainians who, uh, who have taken part of the Russian territory. It's, uh, it was about uh, Russian regime decision to come into, uh, into Ukraine, firstly into the Crimean Peninsula, with the famous green man, you know, uh, typical Russian narrative, and after that, uh, not just to Donbass, to the whole Ukraine. And uh, Russian idea was uh, not to uh, establish pro-Russian reality. A Russian idea was uh, to try to fragment Ukraine, to weaken us up to establish a sort of Russian idea of federalization, basically having a sort of veto right on the decision of, uh, of the central government on everything. I mean, defense, foreign policy, economic policy. And, uh, and at the end of the day, depriving us, us Ukrainians of our responsibility and our say about our future and about uh, uh, our way forward. It's why we've been fighting against, uh, against the Russian regime. It's why we've been fighting against the Russian aggression, also enjoying solidarity from the, from the civilized world. And for me, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it was a game changer. We believed, we ruled, uh, we, we lived in a rule-based world. We gave uh, our, our part of nuclear weaponry in, uh, in many, in the 90s, and got uh, this famous Budapest Memorandum, political commitments about our security. We believed uh, commitments uh, were commitments. Now we understand uh, it's, uh, 
it, it, it was not uh, it was not at least on uh, on the part of Russia. So our fight, and we will keep fighting. We will keep fighting for our Ukraine, our understanding in Ukraine, and what we want is simply to have the fate of our Ukraine in our hands. To take uh, up very difficult but sovereign decision about uh, our current reality and our future. Uh, building up uh, the future Ukraine on the basis of democracy, uh, human rights, and to put, uh, to put a human in the center of, uh, of our understanding of uh, our, our Ukrainian reality. To create a new uh, commitment to, uh, to rule of law, because one of the most drawbacks uh, in Ukraine is the lack of rule of law. So very simple things to transform Ukraine from the post-Soviet reality into the European uh, and democratic reality. Russia and Russian leadership, uh, they had completely different opinions. They, you know, it, uh, it's coming from, uh, from the Russian empire through, uh, through the Soviet Union and uh, Stalin and uh, Famous uh, Holodomor, the great famine in Ukraine, uh, which exterminated millions of Ukrainians just because they were Ukrainians and were attached to land. It, uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's just uh, about, uh, about simple things uh, to become Ukrainians, to become uh, masters of, uh, of our life. Russia did not want and does not want uh, to allow us uh, such, uh, such a noble goal to, uh, to realize. Why? Very simple. Because uh, Ukrainian success as democratic and European country would fundamentally negate everything uh, what is going on in Russia in the reality of, uh, of a country where there is no real democracy, no real rule of law, where we have now more than 70 political prisoners, many of them uh, on hunger strike. And what is important, not fighting for themselves, but fighting for their friends, like, uh, our military is fighting not, not just for himself, but fighting for Ukraine and their brothers in arms. Uh, it's, uh, Russia is a reality. We have to deal with this reality. But it's a very important lesson for every one of us. All kind of, uh, all kind of destabilization all kind of problems, starting from propaganda, cyber threats, towards uh, assassinations. We had Salisbury a couple of months ago. Everything which, uh, which has been happening in Ukraine and which definitely will come in the run up to our elections and what will be tested in Ukraine in, uh, in the future uh, will be applied here. In what way, it's a, it's a different story, but will be definitely applied here. So my call, uh, my call to everyone, and it's very simple. Russia does not live in a vacuum, and we need a sense of solidarity. Only by solidarity, political pressure, consistent sanctions, and uh, our drive forward, uh, we can uh, win against uh, such, uh, such autocracies. You know, remember the famous sequel of Star Wars? Mm, you know, it's always about empire fighting against, uh, against good people. And good people uh, never give up. 
Uh, Russia is uh, fundamentally interested in uh, weakening up and breaking democratic institutions. Russia believes that liberal values or democratic values uh, is not the way forward. Uh, we, we are interested uh, to strengthen up uh, our world and our sense, uh, our sense of the future. Let's take Donbass. It would have been uh, extremely easy to get peace back to Donbass. Why and how? It's just about getting uh, international component into the occupied territory. It could be peacekeeping operation. It could be international administration. It could be police mission. It could be a combination of that. Uh, Russia does not want to. Uh, Lavrov uh, told us uh, in the last uh, Normandy ministerial very clearly, we don't want our guys and our structures to be transformed in the occupied Donbass. What we want is just a kind of special status to legitimize uh, what, we, uh, what we already achieved there. So if, uh, if it's about legitimization of occupation and using Donbass as a sort of Trojan horse, to push into Ukraine and to destabilize us and to, uh, to destroy the European project, U uh, you know, Ukrainian democratic project. It's not our way of seeing it, and it's not uh, the way how all democratic countries see it further. Of course, uh, for Russia, it's all about trade-offs. It's about using political prisoners as a trade-off. It's about using Donbass trade-off, people of Donbass, everyone. Uh, Russia is a different reality, not focused on, uh, on people, focused on grandeur, power. Uh, but uh, we, have, uh, we have great chance to win against such reality because uh, it's not sustainable. And it's about us going forward. And uh, if, we, if we give up, I believe we are nowhere. So uh, we'll keep fighting. We believe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just about uh, helping our people on the occupied territories, their Ukrainian citizens, to get back to Ukraine. So it's not just about territory, it's, uh, it's about people. It's about... Uh, our solidarity. It's about going uh, forward consistently with sanctions and with political pressure. And it's important that the new Amer US administration uh, had started targeting not just uh, uh, Russian, uh, Russian state companies, but also Russian oligarchs and companies uh, which are behind the Russian system. Because it's the same system. There is no way of flexibility there. But it's also important to have support of everyone, including here in Ireland. It's really important in the sense of uh, Crimean non-recognition policy not to allow anyone to break uh, the sanctions regime, including here, Irish business. You know, if you, uh, it's, it's your personal decision. I mean, not your personal decision, but someone's personal decision to engage with Russian business. But to engage on the occupied territory in Crimea, it's against the law, because sanctions is about, uh, it's about law. And it's about solidarity. And again, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about our way forward. So fundamentally, the Russian narrative and uh, you have Russia today here, you know, airing to the whole Europe about a kind of uh, nationalistic uh, regime, uh, basically steering in Ukraine. Uh, you know, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm a driver and, and all this stuff. But uh, simply, uh, simply have a look how, how, it's all, uh, how it's all started. How it's all started and uh, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, what the stakes were in this fight for our Ukraine, for Ukrainians. 
not meddling into the Russian elections. It's about Russians meddling into our elections. Not taking part of the Russian territory. It's about Russia taking part of our territory. It's about Russia trying to uh, get us back into the sphere of influence. And uh, with all kinds of these points, it's not about uh, fighting against uh, sort of uh, Russian mentality or history. It's about fighting against the regime in Russia, which uh, has completely different goal uh, in front of it. But I am uh, fully convinced uh, we will be successful. We simply have to be successful. With good friends uh, like Pitt, with good uh, people around. And uh, last, uh, last point uh, you've mentioned, uh, I'm a physicist by education. I remember how one of my uh, professors told me many, many years ago, you know, I, uh, I certainly forgot everything I, I had learned uh, in, my, in my career about physics. Yeah. So he told me a story about uh, Albert Einstein teaching in the Zurich University and distributing different tasks among the students. And one of the students uh, raised uh, his hand, uh, so, you know, wavering and said, but professor, these are the same tasks. Uh, we had uh, two or uh, two years ago, and then Stanford says, fine, but the answers are different. I believe the answers are different. Even with such, uh, with such Russia we have uh, in front of us. But our answers uh, should be about maintaining our democratic legacy and, uh, and our way forward. Again, it sounds like a platitude, but, but now it's not. It's, uh, it's about our way of life, and uh, it's about our way forward. Thanks a lot. Let me stop here, because uh, I, can, I can speak for, uh, for quite a while. And I will try to, uh, to at least to try, you know, to answer all of, uh, all of your points. But uh, again, very simple message. We will keep fighting. We won't stop here and we understand what we want to achieve. And we need friends to help us, uh, to help us along. Very simple. Thanks again. It's great to be here second time. It's, uh, it's not a sort of tradition, but already coming, uh, coming to this direction. It's great to have Pat, you know, also, uh, also here in this institute, and basically in Dublin, because we met probably 100 times, but never in Dublin. It's a shame. Uh, and it's great to have uh, to have such friends. Thanks again for today's opportunity.